Hey, comic family. This is Scarpad. Scarpad's comic tracks. And today, my very first episode of comics. Scarpad's comics with Pomeranians. I think it's going to be a unique show. And the best thing about doing a comic book review show with your dog is the dog just shuts the fuck up and doesn't say a thing. Which is great. So thank you for coming to the first episode of Scarpad's Comics with Pomeranians. Should be a good one. Today I'm looking at issue 11 of Star Trek Year 5 from IDW. Star Trek Year 5 from IDW is a good series. I've been enjoying it. Um, it's up to issue 11 now. I don't know if it has an in-game. I, I think it was originally supposed to be like a 12-issue a series, but I've seen solicitations out there now for up to issue 15, so we'll just say it's an ongoing. I uh, don't know if it has an end, uh, end issue yet, but just like uh, Star Trek Year 4 uh, a few years back looked at the... Uh, Voyage of the original Enterprise in the fourth season that never was on TV. This is looking at the Voyage of the Enterprise in the fifth and final uh, year of their five-year mission. Also never on television. Although some consider Star Trek the Animated Series to be uh, year four uh, of, of Star Trek. And in fact, Lieutenant Erex, which is that monkey-like creature with uh, a third arm. Nice to have a third arm. Is it nice to have a third arm? Third leg? Third leg would be nice. But uh, Lieutenant Eric is there, so it's. It, I guess you could say it's a continuation of that. Well, issue number 11 continues off where we left off. Uh, the, the Enterprise has moved off from its mission, uh, which found Sulu falling in love with a fish and sleeping with the fishes, a la Tony Soprano. And uh, Spock and Chekhov making a blunder that cost, you know, millions of lives on a planet, even though it wasn't their uh, intention to, to shovel the planet into civil war. It happened. So this guy deals with the repercussions of that. At the beginning of this issue, Kirk is uh, reviewing what, you know, who was in a coma for most of that last issue. Uh, Kirk is reviewing uh, Spock's command and basically telling him that you know, what he did is what he would have done, but Spock is having none of it. Spock is uh, very uh, human when it comes to blaming himself for stuff, that, shit that happens. Meanwhile, uh, we also have the Scotty and the crew uh, functioning a uh, environmental suit for the Tholian child they've been harboring since, uh, I think it's issue three or four. Uh, there was a whole Tholian uh, plot and this child is living among the crew. And uh, now we're seeing some repercussions from that because this issue features the return of Gary Seven. If uh, you Star Trek fans remember, Gary Seven was a uh, alien played by Robert Lansing in the original uh, episode, Simon Earth, where he and Terry Garr, uh, were, he was a gentleman uh, that came back from the future, works with a shadowy association to try to help save worlds and save planets and along with uh, his secretary who was Terry Gurr and his cat Isis uh, go from planet to planet and it was intended to be a pilot for a spin-off show they wanted to uh, shit can Star Trek at the second season and spin this show off and that never happened Star Trek came back for another year we never saw any more adventures uh, of Gary Seven although there's been some in comic and book form uh, when this opens up, Gary and his cat Isis, uh, on, on, I think they're on Tholia, and they're uh, preparing for this mission. That's going to bring him, uh, you know, once again in the, the crosshairs with Kirk and crew. And, um, you know, Gary was always kind of like this uh, alien that, uh, while I guess you could say his intentions were good, he would go to extremes to uh, do what he needed to do. Uh, you know, almost starting World War Three and assignment Earth. So in this one, he looks like uh, he's going to, you know, really be going at the Enterprise crew. 
to prevent the oncoming darkness. Now, I don't know what this darkness is going to be. I'm, I'm not a big fan of seeing darkness. You know, that's that's what's going to be happening in season three of Discovery and New Trek, where everything dark and dank and dismal and you know, I guess Star Trek has done it before. Where all the Star Trek movies always had some kind of world and universe threatening thing, I, you know. But I like my Star Trek with a little bit lesser consequences. You know, the fate of worlds can hang in a balance. But when we start dealing with oncoming, encroaching darknesses, well, I don't know. But we'll see what that is. But, uh, you know, Gary's moral compass is uh, somewhere skewed where he'll do whatever it takes. And he's pretty much going to... He's trying to kill the Enterprise crew in this. Now, once again, I am yeah, I guess I might buy it in Gary 7. You know, Discovery did all that thing with a reimagining of Harry Mudd turning him into a homicidal killer. Didn't really fit that character. I thought it was a, was a misstep. I'll give it uh, to the comic here because while I don't think he ultimately would kill, like he's going to do in this comic, the Enterprise and the crew... But I guess if the stakes are high enough, Gary Seven is a character that would go to this, these extremes. So this is part one of that story. I'll see where that goes to make my own decision uh, on how that's all going to shake out. But this is a, good, a decent story. Uh, it doesn't uh, explain where Miss Lincoln is. Uh, I guess he's parted ways with Roberta Lincoln. Uh, she's not in this comic. And that kind of makes sense. I, I always like to boil it down to... Gary Seven's cat. That's the only duo I need to see. So, I, you know, maybe he'll have adventures with Roberta Lincoln on and off. But the character is, is good. The likeness of uh, Robert Lansing is good. Uh, the artwork in this comic is good. Uh, and it continues just the uh, quality that they've had. Uh, I'm enjoying this series. Uh, it'll probably be wrapping up in, you know, four or five issues as they transition on to... Um, you know, the five-year mission moving on. I'd like to see IDW tackle that, uh, the whole, have a series during uh, the motion picture time frame. The only thing we ever got from that would be the uh, paper comic strips and the ill-fated Marvel 18-issue run back in the, uh, you know, early 80s. So I'd like to see that that, uh, time frame addressed. I think there's a lot of stories to tell there. Uh, they've had stories in that time frame from time to time in other comics, but maybe that's where they'll pro- progress from there. We'll see. Uh, so that's Star Trek Year 5, Issue 11. It's worth picking up if you haven't done so. came out, I believe, a couple weeks ago, uh, so it should be on your comic shelves now. So thank you, everybody. Thank you for joining my first episode of Comics with Pomeranians. I know my dog Bailey has enjoyed this. He's, uh, he's uh, over there... Uh, just uh, lapping it all up. We'll catch you later, guys. Keep reading. Keep trekking. And remember, flip a card. <laughs>